Over the past two decades, China has tripled the size of its navy. But that's not all. Alongside this expansion, it has heavily invested in advanced anti-ship missiles, satellite targeting systems, and, most importantly, military drones that are revolutionizing naval warfare. In 2022, China launched the aircraft carrier Fujin. By December 2024, it unveiled the Sichuan, a brand new amphibious assault ship that experts are calling the world's first dedicated drone carrier. The Sichuan's standout feature is its electromagnetic catapult system, similar to the cutting-edge technology found on the latest aircraft carriers. This system enables the launch of heavy drones and aircraft, transforming the ship into a versatile tool for surveillance, targeting, and supporting amphibious operations. But how does this technology work? And how is it changing naval capabilities by allowing drones to operate at sea? Let's break it down. As you might know, a fighter aircraft needs to reach a certain speed to take off. On land, this is achieved using long runways. But on an aircraft carrier, space is limited. For example, during World War II, aircraft carriers deployed small, lightweight planes. However, as planes grew larger and heavier over time, taking off from a carrier deck became more challenging. This led to the development of innovative solutions. The British, for instance, pioneered technology for vertical or short takeoff and landing. The idea was to address scenarios where enemy attacks could destroy runways, rendering conventional aircraft unable to take off. The British devised a jet capable of vertical takeoff, not a helicopter, but a plane. Instead of relying on a long runway, this aircraft directed its jet thrust downward, lifting off vertically like a rocket. It was a jet with thrust vectoring nozzles. When the nozzles point downward, the aircraft takes off vertically. When they point backward, it flies like a standard jet. And when pointed forward, it can even fly in reverse. This innovation was used on British Invincible-class carriers with the Harrier jets, renowned for their vertical takeoff and landing capabilities. The combat effectiveness of these aircraft is backed by history. Take the 1982 Falklands War, for instance. Despite being subsonic, Harriers managed to shoot down 21 supersonic Argentine jets without losing a single one of their own. Here's another story. In 1983, a Harrier pilot lost navigation and couldn't locate the carrier. With fuel almost depleted, the pilot spotted a Spanish cargo ship at sea. Thanks to the Harrier's vertical landing capability, he landed on the ship. Later, the British government had to pay £570,000 to buy the jet back from the ship's captain. Harriers are incredibly maneuverable, but they have their flaws, namely, a high accident rate. Jokingly nicknamed Widowmakers, these aircraft often claimed their pilots' lives due to turbulence caused by the nozzles during vertical takeoff. Another takeoff method eventually replaced this approach, the ski jump launch. This method involves raising the end of an aircraft carrier's deck to create a ramp. The incline allows jets to accelerate and take off, even if they haven't yet reached the speed needed for lift. As the plane leaves the ramp, it continues to gain speed in the air until it achieves sufficient velocity for stable flight. This method is simple, reliable, and widely used today including on China's Liaoning and Shandong carriers with J-15 carrier-based fighter jets. However, ski jump launches aren't suitable for heavy aircraft with low thrust-to-weight ratios, such as airborne early warning and control planes. So, what role do these planes serve at sea? The issue is that ships far beyond the horizon can't be seen from sea level due to the curvature of the Earth. To locate enemy vessels, AWACS unit equipped with radars are deployed into the sky acting as the eyes of the carrier strike group. However, these aircraft come with unique challenges. They're large, and their engines lack the power and maneuverability of fighter jets. Without enough thrust, they simply can't take off from the aircraft carrier using conventional methods. How did China address this issue? Instead of AWACS planes, the Liaoning and Shandong carriers use radar-equipped helicopters. While functional, Helicopters are much slower than jet aircraft. This makes it easier for adversaries to detect Chinese carriers first, leaving their slower helicopters unable to locate the enemy in time. This creates a significant disadvantage for China in naval operations. 
Why then can American aircraft carriers launch AWACS planes? The answer lies in a different technology, the steam catapult system. Think of it as a giant slingshot that propels aircraft, giving them the necessary speed to take off. The energy for this slingshot is generated by steam. Here's how it works. Beneath the carrier's deck is a large cylinder filled with water and high-temperature steam under immense pressure. A guiding pipe extends from the cylinder, housing a piston connected to the aircraft's landing gear. When a valve is opened, the pressurized steam flows into the pipe, pushing the piston forward. This, in turn, accelerates the aircraft to takeoff speed. This technology is exclusive to the United States. All Nimitz-class carriers are equipped with four steam catapult tracks. France also uses steam catapults on its Charles de Gaulle aircraft carrier, which has two catapults. However, the technology itself was originally developed by the U.S. Despite its effectiveness, the steam catapult system has drawbacks. First, it is highly complex and requires extensive maintenance. The mechanical systems are prone to breakdowns and need frequent inspections and repairs. Second, steam catapults take up significant space and consume vast amounts of water and steam. For instance, a single launch can require up to a ton of fresh water. Another major downside is the lengthy preparation time. Before it can be used, the system needs to be preheated, a process that can take up to 24 hours. This means the catapult cannot be activated on short notice. To address these issues, the U.S. developed a more advanced solution, the electromagnetic catapult system. After decades of research, this cutting-edge technology was only recently implemented. Like the steam catapult, the electromagnetic system accelerates aircraft for takeoff. However, instead of steam, it uses electricity and magnetism. The system comprises several key components. Control system oversees and coordinates the entire process. Electric management system is responsible for generating and distributing the required energy. And finally, energy storage system stores a large amount of energy and releases it in a single powerful pulse to launch the aircraft. The core of the launch mechanism is a linear motor. Unlike traditional motors, which rotate when powered, linear motors move in a straight line. This design enables the efficient and rapid acceleration of aircraft, offering significant advantages over older methods. Let me give you a simple analogy. Think about how a toilet flush works. You don't use water directly from the pipe. It wouldn't be effective. Instead, water is stored in a tank. When you press the flush button, all the stored water is released at once, creating a powerful flow to clear everything. The same concept applies here. The electromagnetic system stores energy and then releases it in a sudden, intense burst to launch an aircraft. To date, only two countries have mastered electromagnetic catapult technology, the U.S. and China. The U.S. uses it on its Ford-class carriers, while China has equipped its Fujian aircraft carrier and Sichuan amphibious assault ship with similar systems. Let's delve into the operation of these systems, starting with the ship's power supply. While this can be a complex topic, we'll focus on the key points. In China, a major contributor to this field is the renowned academic Ma Wei-ming, who proposed the concept of an integrated electric power system for ships. This system consolidates all of a ship's energy needs, propulsion, catapult operations, weapon systems, and other tasks into one unified system. For instance, if more energy is required for propulsion, it's redistributed to the engines. If a catapult launch is needed, energy is rerouted there. This integrated approach optimizes energy management and significantly enhances the ship's functionality. Now let's explore energy storage systems. How exactly do they work? While specifics about the Fujin's technology haven't been disclosed, we can look at the method used by the US, which relies on flywheels. What's a flywheel? Simply put, it's a heavy wheel that stores energy by spinning. Inside the ship, there are numerous flywheels, each weighing several tons. When the catapult isn't in use, the ship's power system directs electricity to spin these flywheels. Gradually, their rotational speed increases, reaching an impressive 6,400 revolutions per minute 
in just 45 seconds. Due to their large mass and high speed, the flywheels store a significant amount of kinetic energy. When it's time to launch an aircraft, this stored kinetic energy is converted into electrical energy and transferred to the catapult to power it. How much energy does this generate? Approximately 121 megajoules, which is equivalent to 33 kilowatt hours. That might not sound like a lot, but the key is that this energy is released in just 2 to 3 seconds, producing around 60 megawatts of power. This immense power is more than enough to launch an aircraft using a linear motor. So, how does a linear motor work? There are several designs and I'll briefly explain two of them. One of the simplest designs is a linear motor with guide rails. Here's how it works. You have a power source, such as a battery, two rails, and a metal conductor capable of carrying electrical current. This conductor can move freely along the rails. When an electric current flows through the conductor, it generates a magnetic field. According to the right-hand rule, a magnetic field forms around the conductor. The interaction of this magnetic field with the conductor produces a force known as the Ampere's force. This force propels the conductor forward, moving it along the rails. This is how the linear motor creates the motion needed to accelerate the aircraft. The force generated by a linear motor is proportional to the square of the current. To achieve greater speed or power, the system requires a very strong current. However, this approach has its drawbacks. High current can damage the rails, reduce energy efficiency, and limit overall performance. Additionally, this method functions like a single-phase motor, which restricts its capabilities. To overcome these limitations, modern systems use a coil-based design instead of guide rails. This method is based on a rail with a series of metal posts wrapped in coils of wire. When an electric current flows through one of these coils, it becomes a solenoid, creating a magnetic field. One side of the solenoid becomes a north pole, and the other side becomes a south pole. Now imagine a movable block connected to the aircraft. This block has a permanent magnet with a north and south pole. When the north pole of the coil meets the south pole of the magnet, they attract each other. The same happens with the other side, creating a force that pushes the block forward. As the block moves past the active coil, the current in that coil switches off and the next coil turns on. This way, the magnetic field shifts along the rail, pulling the block forward and accelerating it. By adjusting the strength of the current, the system can control how fast and how strongly the block moves. Although real-life linear motors are more complex, the basic idea remains the same using electricity and magnetism to create motion, which is then used to accelerate the aircraft. Electromagnetic catapults have many advantages over steam catapults. For starters, they're much more powerful. A steam catapult releases about 95 megajoules of energy during a launch, while an electromagnetic one generates 120 megajoules. That's about 25% more. They're also way more efficient. Steam catapults only use about 6% of the energy they produce, but electromagnetic ones use 60%. That's 10 times more efficient. And then there's reliability. Steam catapults are pretty complicated machines, and they tend to break down. On average, they can handle about 405 launches before something goes wrong. But an electromagnetic catapult can manage 1,300 launches between failures. That's a massive difference, but the biggest advantage is how smooth and controlled the launch is. Steam catapults can't adjust their thrust very well. At the start of the launch, the thrust is really strong, but it drops off as the system works. The difference between the maximum and average acceleration can be more than 200%. It's rough for the pilots and the aircraft. Electromagnetic catapults, on the other hand, are much smoother. They can precisely control the thrust and keep it steady throughout the launch. The variation in acceleration is less than 5%, which is a game changer for safety and comfort. So, overall, Electromagnetic catapults are a massive step forward in technology, making aircraft launches more powerful, efficient, and reliable, while also being much safer for the pilots. And most importantly, a steam catapult needs to preheat its cylinders before use, which can take more than 24 hours. An electromagnetic catapult, on the other hand, is ready to go in just 15 minutes. This is crucial in combat situations because 
being able to launch an aircraft earlier could be the key to winning a war. Without a doubt, Chinese military scientists have made a technological leap by skipping the development of steam catapults and going straight to advanced electromagnetic systems. It's a brilliant achievement for China's military science. However, there's still a significant gap between the naval forces of China and the United States in terms of displacement, weaponry, carrier aviation, and propulsion systems. That said, China is focusing heavily on drones. Taiwanese military expert Zhang Yanting notes that maritime conditions, waves, wind direction, and wind speed often make it challenging to launch and recover drones. Their long wings increase the risks of operating them on aircraft carriers. However, the use of electromagnetic catapults significantly reduces these technical difficulties, enabling safe drone launches. Zhang Yanting also points out that the future of amphibious operations is inevitably moving toward automation and three-dimensional warfare, using technology on the surface, underwater, and in the air. The Sichuan ship represents a significant step forward for the Chinese military in autonomous operations. Looking ahead, the Chinese Navy will likely distribute tasks more efficiently. For instance, the Sichuan might specialize in drone operations, while the carriers Liaoning, Shandong, and Fujian focus on missions involving manned aircraft. This kind of specialization will enable more effective control of the seas and increase the chances of success in critical strategic battles, such as a potential conflict over Taiwan. As spectators, all we can do is grab some popcorn and watch the show unfold. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you once again, and bye.